taking the panel to speak specifically to the idea of emotion in the work. After all, the show is called Drama Queer. And what we were interested in doing is teasing out the idea of contradictory emotion, because one of the theses of the exhibition is the idea that emotions in the queer community are often pulling in opposing directions. After all, the very terms we use to describe ourselves were born of attempts to either police us or to declare us mentally unfit. So we often find ourselves forced to use the language of depression to describe our own identities. That is rich and complicated territory. And it's territory a lot of these artists work in. My practice uh, since I was 15 in 1976 have been focused on unpacking what it means to uh, mediate images, circulate images, and uh, in, in the service of uh, changing hearts and minds towards life-affirming social and pers personal action. At that time, I knew I was gay, and within the Chicano power movement and the Chicano art movement, I never saw my images, so I came out of this uh, need to see myself reflected in popular culture. Using puppets and, and the idea of uh, dolls and things that are real and not real. I like using photography, which is sort of thought of as a real, uh, a real document, and it's not real. I wanted to say one other thing. I wanted to say uh, that it was a real pleasure to be in this show, and I've never felt more at home in mm. the show. So um, I'm happy about that. I'm thrilled. Wonderful. Thank you. I think about six plus one lovers who have died, and number seven was painted in 2007, probably started in July, the seventh month. So these things build up and they start to make sense. And then you start to do, you pull, you're pulling sort of your skills as an artist to, as a painter to make that, to build that construct using your devices, uh, art historical or uh, media of the day. Uh, newspapers, magazines, you know, these, the, the ephemera of the studio. All of us who were a certain age remember the first time we stepped into a gay bar or a queer bar. That was our safe zone. Uh, we knew what happened a couple weeks ago could happen anytime, anywhere. It happened in 1999 in Britain. But it was a, you know, it was a safe zone. No matter what, how scary it was to walk in there the first time, that you knew you were going to be accepted, not unconditionally, because you're going to get red the first time you walk into a gay bar. Like, you know, really, <laughs> are you wearing that? But you're going to be, <laughs> but you are accepted unquestionably. Um, maybe that's why this has rocked us to the core. This is me pushing back. Question is, does God hate homosexuals? Does God hate homosexuals? God, God, God hate evil action. Does God hate evil action? Does God hate God evil action? But rather an attribute of the Almighty, does God hate evil action? Does God hate evil action? He's talking about the scriptures. He is God. 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 He.
So this story, these stories have been popular in China for 5,000 years. <laughs> this is my favorite. So this kid, his family was so poor that they cannot afford land flights, so he can't study at night. That gives him major anxiety. Like he, he's just not being able to study at night. It's really, he can't stand it. So what he does is, in the daytime, he would go out into the forest, gather firewood, so in the nighttime, he can study by firewood lights. And I said, why doesn't he just study in the day and sleep at night like a normal person? <laughs> <laughs> I said, that's not so funny. That's what it takes. It takes that kind of risk. Um, that kind of trust um, that is put forward on the table for a collaboration to happen in the first place. And I think one of the things that I appreciate about tonight, about all of y'all being here, um, is the fact that we can now turn that trust outwards and entrust this to you. so much that I see and I experience um, that, that really requires change and all of these works are screaming uh, for us to do something. They're telling stories that we need to hear. Yes. What was your favorite? <laughs> Anybody? Paul. Yeah. Like Paul. 16 mil fang. 16 mil. Fang. 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 Yeah. I really like the enemy. You just scream fang. Chloe's heart started to pound, and she tingled all the way down to her clit. But she played it cool as she casually removed Billy's hand. Not so fast. You'll spoil your dinner. Desire. God is love, they say. But desire can be a cruel god, I think to myself. I think whoever named G-Spot, G-Spot must have been a straight person. Anyway, this is called G-Spot. <laughs> My story as, a, as an AIDS activist began, and so with the dawn of the protease inhibitors, we, we were calling it the last words effect. There were people who were at death's door, who could be turned around by the use of the protease inhibitors. And I finally contemplated that I could give up all, all my six years as an activist and return to what I was actually put on earth to do, which is to write music.